In this episode of Windows Games on Linux, I'm going out Fallout 3, one of the most notoriously hard things to get working on Windows, but we're going to get it working on Linux. So what do I mean hard to get working on Windows? Well, uh, Fallout 3 was actually created on Windows Games for Live, that was the publisher, and this required you to install a third-party app, and it's just everyone hated it in the Windows community. And this being a 10-year-old game, uh, it's pretty much been discontinued altogether. So uh, many Windows users, which I'm going to pop up over here, um, all the recent reviews from Steam, as you see, uh, there's some pretty bad, bad reviews, and that's just people unable to get the game working in Windows. So let's get it working on Linux, and not only get it working, but make it work even better. So uh, I'm gonna show just some basic tweaks. I'm not gonna go too in depth here. Uh, so if you're a part of like the Fallout 3 mod community or you want to do INI edits and all those other things, you can do that. Uh, but today's video, I'm just gonna get it working and get it stable so uh, you guys can easily kind of see some gameplay and also do all these settings and get it working yourself. Now I will mention, I am doing this on the Steam version of uh, Fallout, uh, Fallout 3. So this is all based on Steam and Proton. Now, if you have an old, like good old games or you purchased it directly and have the CD, you could do this in Lutris and they have install scripts to make it work. However, I am not going over that method of installing. Today, I only wanted to cover the Steam install. So the very first thing we need to do is fix the Windows Live portion of Fallout 3. Uh, to do this, we need to actually go in and drop the xlive.dll in the proper spot. So I like to get there by going to local files first. This ensures I'm going to the right spot. Um, and then I just go back to Steam Apps in my folder directory, Compat Data, 22370, PFX, Drive C, and then go over to the Windows folder and System Wow 64. So then we just copy that in there and there's a couple ways you get this DLL file. Um, one, I went ahead and extracted and zip mine up and put it on my website, ChrisTitus.com. You can easily get that, extract it. However, if you're a paranoid type that doesn't trust strangers on the internet, which you should be, I highly recommend you downloading the official MSI, which the link is also down below, extracting that into a blank wine bottle and copying this DLL right here, this xlive.dll, is you need that to launch the game. So once you've done that, you can now launch the game, but before that happens, there are a couple things I'd like to mention here. Um, so if we're gonna go back in here, I'm gonna launch back into the launcher of uh, Fallout 3. Now, I've set some launch options, which I'm gonna go ahead and clear out. So let's pull up the launcher for it. And from here, we'll go into the options menu. And then this is where you would set all your options. Major, major effects to look out here is screen effects, none. And then if you go into the advanced section, water, sometimes water reflections and other things can cause problems. So I'd recommend turning these off, the refractions and reflections, um, as this helps with some, some people saying that there's, there's some issues with that. Um, but just know, take those off and then the rest of this is pretty much standard. You just pick it and go. So uh, other than those two things, if you still see a bunch of flashing and texture popping happening, I'd recommend taking this and turning it to off. And then that should fix a lot of the texture popping if you run into that. And this is pretty standard. Honestly, if you're playing on Windows, you're still having to go through this type of thing. Um, so that's the options for Fallout 3 Launcher. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel and exit. Um, now the third one, this is something I actually created. So you won't see this on any guides online and I highly recommend always checking out ProtonDB.com before launching any game that you're having problems with. But if you go into properties of this and hit set launch options, you can actually paste this string, which I'm also putting that in the description. And basically what this command does, I'm gonna just go through it real fast. 
one, it uses Wine 3D. And what we want from that is it to just utilize the OpenCL aspect of Wine um, because Fallout 3 was made in DX9 and Vulkan and other aspects uh, really aren't utilized. The other thing I put in here, and this is kind of a new option for Proton, so you need uh, probably the latest and greatest version of it. 16.6 um, .6 beta is what I'm using right now, and I'll show that here in a second. Uh, force large address aware equals one. This forces all the executables to be aware of large addresses. Uh, normally, most Fallout people would actually patch the executable. Well, with this command, I don't think uh, you need to do that any longer. So uh, very, very cool. So less editing in the Explorer. And then the final one basically says, hey, if you're trying to launch the, it tells Steam, instead of launching Fallout Launcher.exe, launch Fallout 3.exe. This bypasses the launcher completely and launches directly into the game. So all these options are just incredible and very, very powerful. Um, and then the final thing before I launch into Fallout 3, I wanted to show just the overall settings and what I'm doing, Steam Play, and I'm doing 3.16-6 beta uh, for this launch. So with all that done, um, you should be able to launch into it. One other thing I will point out, if you're a Fallout fan, you probably want to edit the actual ionize and executables. Do that by browsing the local files here, and you can get to that by just hitting config, and this is actually saved, so we don't need that. Uh, we actually need the uh, default.ini. You can change the settings here. However, uh, many people actually want the regular options of the config files or just fallout.ini prefs and the regular ones that are created. To get to there, you would just simply go to the Steam library, Steam apps, compat data, kind of go back into where we changed that xlive, except instead of going into Windows, we go to users, Steam user, my docs, my games, Fallout 3, and then you see all of our configs right here. So very nice, very easy to get to once you've learned where they're at. Um, and then, you know, honestly set it and kind of forget it kind of thing. I haven't really messed around with any custom settings here. There are a lot of guides online that says, hey, you should do this and that. And I, I really just haven't really messed with much. And then obviously my save games are here as well. So uh, I've only loaded this up and just got out of the intro sequence and got out of the vault and that is where I have left off. So let's go ahead and do some sample gameplay. So to start off here, we're gonna go ahead and launch into Fallout 3 and just do that by hitting play. Let's see what we get. And this is an ultra wide. Uh, again, if you've watched any of my prior videos, you know that I'm a ultra wide user. So that's why you see kind of the black lines on the top and bottom. I like this just because it gives me a little bit of uh, heads up and I do have to do more customization and it kind of shows everyone that, hey, uh, you can do this on anything. You know, if, if there's anything out there as far as a big monitor concern, uh, a lot of these play just fine unless there's an actual game limitation. All right, here we are. Need to head to Megaton. So let's go ahead and look at our map and see what we have. So it says just go straight ahead. We'll run through here. I probably should rest or something like that. There's some quick saving action. And let's try to do quick load. Pretty cool. So there's the quick save, quick load. And let's go ahead and do some combat. Just so you guys can see that. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and quit out here. So let me go find a, like a critter or something to beat up on, and then I'll probably call it a day. But overall, just the stock settings for being a 10 year old game, man, it looks really, really good. And honestly, this plays a lot better than almost any of my other games, which is pretty sweet. Yes, let's go up to Megaton real fast and finish entering there. Oh man, that's some woo-woo vision from that blowing up in my face.
So I'm going to speed this clip up 500%. Uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, drinking. So you get that third person view that sometimes can glitch out on some games. Um, resting as far as the weight feature, sitting down, and then just common interaction. So I'm going to fly around town real fast and you'll see about a minute montage here. And this is the one thing when you quit out, it kind of freezes here. I thought I'd show this real fast and then I just go ahead and terminate. So one little bug here at the end, but other than that, it works really well as you saw from that clip. So now that you guys have seen all the gameplay, you see it works really well and it actually looks really beautiful for it being as old of a game as it is. So I really am impressed by this. And honestly, the performance is just feels great. Uh, from my perspective and uh, I it really really enjoyed playing it and probably even more so on Linux than Windows because with these tweaks it's just so clean and it just works really really well um, but that is it for today's video guys let me know what you think in the comments below and let me know if there's any game in particular you guys would like to see and with that said I'll see you on the next video